Hi, I'm Laura from Meadowlark Violin, and today we're going to be learning a Christmas classic, Silent Night. You can download the free sheet music on my website, meadowlarkviolin.com, so that you can follow along. And I'll put a link to the sheet music in the description below. Silent Night sounds absolutely beautiful on the violin, but it can be deceptively tricky. We're trying to be quiet and calm and smooth, and that can sometimes be very difficult on the violin. Now, anytime I'm dealing with long, quiet notes, I like to try and arrange my bowings so that the long, quiet note is on a down bow, because it's much easier to maintain a piano dynamic on a down bow rather than an up bow. It's this. versus this. Doing a long, quiet bow on an up bow all the way to the frog can be very tricky, and it often ends up like this. Something like that, which we want to avoid. However, in Silent Night, you're just going to have to do long, quiet bows on up bows and down bows. So what I want you to think about is staying more in the upper half of the bow it's easier to be quiet up there anyway. That means that you're going to need to move your bow a little slower for up bows and a little faster for down bows. This will keep you from getting trapped in the frog. Now, if you feel comfortable using your entire bow and staying quiet and controlled while you're in the lower half of the bow, by all means, use your entire bow. But if you're having a little bit of trouble with that, that's totally fine. Just work on staying more in the upper half. All right, let's get started learning Silent Night. We're in the key of G major, which means we have one sharp, and our half step pairs are between B and C and F sharp and G. All right, let's talk about that first note. Now, normally I'm a fan of starting any song from the string. That means your bow is already on the string and then you draw it. But for this song, I think it's actually nice to start away from the string. And it's gonna give you a little bit of a softer start so you don't get this kind of ka sound when you start. So I suggest practicing starting this like an airplane. Think of how an airplane lands on the runway. So I want you to start above the string. You're already moving down and you're just going to hit the string lightly with the edge of your bow hair as you're coming down. And you hear you can get a really nice soft sound that way. Make sure you're on the edge of your bow hair as well. All right, moving on, in between measure one and two, you've got an open D to a second finger B on the G string. You're gonna see this a lot in this song. And this is just part of the G major arpeggio. So if you're practicing your arpeggio notes, then this will be pretty easy for you. But I do suggest practicing that D to B several times. Because you don't get a chance to build up to the B. So that D to B is going to sound like Brahms' lullaby. So listen to that to help you get it in tune. Now in measure two, you want to work on going all the way to the tip for that B. In measure four, I want you to save your bow because that's an up bow on a long bow. So you don't want to get all the way to the frog and have to go over to the A string when you're down there in the lower half. So you're saving your bow there, but I also want you to stretch and be preparing for that fourth finger A while you're playing the B. So you've got your B down. And you notice how while I'm playing the B, my thumb moves up my pinky is stretching and getting ready, and I'm also kind of moving my elbow forward a little bit here. All of those things is gonna help me get that stretch. So. And then I can place the fourth finger and get it pretty close to in tune. You can always compare it with your open A. So moving on, in measure five, we'll keep that fourth finger down. And then in between measure six and seven, we've got F sharp to G. Remember that's our half step pair. So those notes are going to touch. They're going to be very close. So make sure the G is right next to the F sharp. All 
All right, moving on to measure nine and 10. Here you've got two E's. And right there in measure 10, you're gonna practice that one to three. What does that sound like? There's Brahms lullaby again. And when you get that third finger G in tune, then I want you to just squish the second finger right up there next to it, because there's your half step pair. Make sure it's right next to the, to the G. There's your open D to second finger B on the G string again. I told you it happens a lot. Moving on, in measure 13, the rest is pretty similar here. So we've got an up bow on an E. So right there on that B, you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be saving your bow because you're on an up bow. You don't want to get too close to the frog. And you're also preparing for your fourth finger A. You really do have to do a fourth finger A here at these places. So do the same thing, play the up bow. Now here in measure 17, we've got two fourth fingers on the A string. And this by itself isn't necessarily too hard. But what is a little tricky is that in measure 18, you've got a C natural. That's a low two on the A string. And what do you think your tendency is going to be as far as intonation goes? You're stretching for your fourth finger here. And then you've got to reach way back to get a low two. It's going to be a big stretch backwards. What's that interval again? That's the Brahms lullaby. It happens a lot in this song. So I want to make sure that you're really stretching. Feel the stretch in your bass knuckles right there. That'll help you get it. Now, another problem with these two measures is that if you're keeping your fourth finger down, you might run into that. What happened there is I was keeping my fourth finger down while I stretched for the two, but the pinky was kind of touching the A string a little bit. So when I moved over to play the C, that's what I got. So you don't have to keep that fourth finger down. Reach, keep it down as you're reaching back. And then right before you play the C, you can lift off that fourth finger. That way you don't run the risk of accidentally touching the A string. Now, if that's pretty tricky for you, I have an alternate fingering here. So look at the numbers below in the sheet music. You could play a fourth finger A for that first A then open A, and then C natural. If that helps, you can go for that fingering. Moving on to measure 18, you start off with a C natural, which is a low two. And then at the end of that measure, you've got an F sharp, which is a high two. So really make sure if it's a low two, make it really low. If it's a high two, make it high. Your tendency for that F sharp is to not be high enough because you just played a low two. So practice that measure several times. Moving on to 19, in between 18 and 19, you've got F sharp to G. There's your half step pair. And then you've got a B. And what I want you to do is leave that third finger down if you can and reach back for the B. This is a pretty compact space, so everyone's tendency is usually to be too low with the B. So watch out for that. Okay, make sure you can hear that interval there. And if you want to, you can actually keep that third finger down in measure 19 through measure 20. because in measure 21, you come right back to it. Now 21 should look familiar. That's G, D, and B. There's a G major arpeggio for you. This is why I always say to practice arpeggios. Okay. And then I want you to do a fourth finger D here. There's no need to go over to an open D. And then it's just a little scale going down. Now for that last note, I want you to really do a nice, beautiful day crescendo for it. So you hold the G. And I want you to make sure that as you're day crescendoing, you're kind of moving over the fingerboard a little bit. That'll help you get a softer sound. Edge of the bow hair, very lightweight here in your bow. And then when you lift off your bow, 
let the note ring. Don't do this and kill the sound. That note is going to continue to ring, so let it. And then when the note has ceased ringing, then you can break your stance and smile and bow. Now to get that light, soft, calm sound, we want to use very light bow weight over here. We also want to be on the edge of our bow here, so make sure that bow is slightly tilted. And you also want to make sure the contact point is a little bit closer to your fingerboard. I'm also anticipating string crossings with my elbow over here and trying to be very fluid and relaxed with my fingers. That helps all of those string changes and bow changes. All right, now let's play through Silent Night together, and I'm going to be playing with the metronome at 65 beats per minute. Now, if you wanted to play Silent Night on the A and E strings, you can do the exact same fingerings, just start on the A string instead of the D string, and you'll be able to play it in D major instead of G major. I hope you enjoyed playing Silent Night this season. For more free Christmas sheet music, head over to my website, metalarkviolin.com. Happy practicing, happy holidays, and Merry Christmas.